Hello grade 11s, welcome back to another video with me Miss Martins. Today I'm going to go over the normal force and how to calculate the normal force, especially those tricky questions where our object is on an inclined plane. Remember, for more videos on forces and Newton's laws, check out the playlist linked in the description box below and more free resources that you can find on my website. I hope to see you in another video. Let's go. The normal force. Okay, so first things first, what is the definition for normal force? The writing on the screen, that is your definition. You need to know it for grade 11, you need to know it for grade 12. It's in the grade 12 exam guidelines, which means it's a definition that they can ask in your final exam. So make sure that you state the definition properly, correctly. So let's see what it says. It says the normal force, and just by the way, the symbol for normal force is either Fn, like that, or you can just use N, capital N. That is normal force. So the normal force is the force or component of a force which a surface exerts on an object with which it is in contact and which is perpendicular to the surface. So what this means is if I have a surface such as this over here, this is my surface, and I have an object on my surface, so this is my calculator, it is resting on my book, my book is my surface, let's pretend it's like the table, then basically the normal force is the force that the surface, so the book, exerts upwards on the object that it is in contact with. So it's the upward force exerted from the surface on the object and the force the normal force acts perpendicularly or 90 degrees relative to the surface so over here you can see that this is a 90 degree angle that's very very important here is the definition again but what I want you to focus on when looking at these images is that we've discussed if a surface is flat or horizontal yes the normal force acts straight up 90 degrees it's at a 90 degree angle relative to the surface. However, when we tilt the surface, such as when my object is on a slope, it's important to note that the 90 degrees, the normal force, will also tilt as well. So if you take a look at what I've got over here, I've got a surface, it is angled at a certain angle, so 30 degrees or whatever that is. We've got an object on my slope. Because my object is now on a slope, the normal force is not upwards like that. It's at 90 degrees relative to the surface. So drawing my object in there, my normal force would act like this. 90 degrees relative to the surface. So the angle between the normal force and the surface must stay 90 degrees. So just keep that in mind, that when your surface tilts, your, obviously your normal force will tilt as well because it's 90 degrees or perpendicular relative to the surface. Here's another drawing that illustrates that quite nicely. So flat, horizontal surface, picture A over here, my normal force points straight up, that's 90 degrees. When I tilt my surface, my normal force tilts as well because it must be at 90 degrees relative to the surface. Now, one of the reasons why it is so important to know how to calculate the normal force, and remember calculating the normal force is different depending on the situation, but it's important to know how to calculate N or Fn, the normal force, because for example, if I want to calculate kinetic friction, that formula requires you to know the normal force. And if I want to calculate maximum static friction or static friction, that formula also requires you to know the normal force. So this is the coefficients of kinetic friction, this is the coefficients of static friction, and N is the normal force. So in order to calculate friction in some cases, we need to know the normal force and you may need to calculate that first. Now, as I mentioned, Calculating the normal force is different depending on the situation. The most obvious and the easiest situation to calculate the normal force is when my object is on a flat, horizontal surface. And that is because of the following. If I have an object sitting or resting on a surface and I draw the free body diagram for that object, you will know that weight acts straight down, so that is Fg or W, and the normal force acts up like that, straight up that object is not moving in the vertical direction or in the perpendicular direction or in the y direction it's not moving up it's not moving down which means the net force in the y direction or in the perpendicular direction is zero and what that means is that whatever my weight is so you see here i said 20 newton 
my normal force will have the same magnitude because 20 newton up 20 newton down they cancel each other out and the box has a net force of zero in the y direction and writing this and knowing how to write this is very, very important. So I know that you will obviously often use the shortcut in your tests and in your exams. And that is, well, ma'am, if the object is on a flat horizontal surface, I know the normal force because it's the same as the weight. So if they give me the weight, if I know the weight is 20 Newton down, then I know the normal force is 20 Newton up. But knowing why it is like that is very, very, very important for more complicated situations. So let me show you. So say we have a situation like this one, and let's say they give me the mass of this object. So they say that this box has a mass of two kilograms. Now, the first thing that I can work out immediately is the weight of that object. They've already sort of given me a free body diagram, but just to show you once more, the free body diagram, is my weight going straight down so this is w or fg and my normal force going straight up fn obviously we're assuming that this box is not moving upwards it's not moving downwards therefore it's stationary in our vertical or our y direction and what this means is that our net force in the y direction or we can say our net force in the perpendicular direction is zero. Remember perpendicular meaning relative to the surface, so up, down, perpendicular relative to the surface. You can call it our y direction as well. It's basically our forces going up and down, right? So I hope you understand what I'm saying. We are considering our forces going up and down. So overall in this direction, the net force is zero. The box is not moving. So looking at the free body diagram, which forces do I have? in my up, down, or my Y, or my perpendicular direction. I've got my normal force, and I've got FG. So what you actually technically need to do is you need to tell me the normal force plus FG, those two forces together add up to zero. Now what we often do, what we, we should actually always do in a physics question is choose a positive direction. So I'm going to choose up as positive. So if I ask the question, what is the normal force? How would you do this? I give you the mass, which means you can find the weight. So I give you the mass, two kilograms, which means you can find the weight. Once you have the weight, I know you'll say to me, but ma'am, if the weight is whatever, then the normal force is the same, okay? Because the, the, it's on a flat surface. Yes, but I'm showing you how we get there with a the calculation. So how do you get the weight? I'm just going to write my little formula over here. The weight is equal to mass times gravitational acceleration or acceleration due to gravity. So we've got our mass as being two and our acceleration due to gravity as being 9.8 because we are on earth and we get 19.6 newtons down. That's my mass. Remember, if they give you, that's my weight, sorry. If they give you your mass, you can convert it to weight. So my weight is 19.6 newton going downwards. See the arrows pointing downwards. Now, if I substitute it in this equation, I'm looking for Fn. Weight is going down. And remember, I chose up as positive, which means I must say minus 19,6 equals zero. Now, look what happens. If I'm solving for Fn, I leave Fn by itself. I take the negative 19,6 over and I get 19,6. Newton up perpendicular to the surface, technically perpendicular to the surface. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, ma'am, that seems very unnecessary because we know that because the surface is flat, the normal force is the same as the weight. So if I work out the weight, which I did over here, 19.6 newtons, then the normal force is the same. I agree with you. But knowing how to set it up like this is very, very important for when the situation becomes more complicated, which I will still do in this video. So you need to know how to set your situation up like this. And it makes sense. Look at your answer. You got a positive answer for normal force. And that should make sense because the normal force is acting upwards. Look at it. It's acting upwards, which is our positive direction. Yes, it's the same value as my weight, which we expect because there are no other forces acting in the perpendicular or the y direction. But remember, like I said, that is not always going to be the case. Okay, so 
Situation number two. What if my object is not on a flat horizontal surface? What if it's on a slope? So remember in the situation that we just covered, the object was on a horizontal flat surface. There were no other forces acting in the y direction or the perpendicular direction or weird forces acting at an angle. There were just two forces acting in the perpendicular or y direction. Weight, which is Fg, and your normal force. And then we said that because that's the case, those two have the same magnitude but opposite direction. Now let's pretend I take the same object, so my mass is still 2 kilograms, but instead of having a flat surface, I have a, a slope or an incline angled at 30 degrees relative to the horizontal. So 30 degrees from the horizontal or relative to the horizontal. What happens now? Now remember, first things first, your weight always acts straight down to the ground, to the earth, and your normal force always acts 90 degrees or perpendicular to the surface. So 90 degrees perpendicular to the surface will be like this. That will be Fn or your normal force. Take note out 90 degrees relative to the surface. Now, what we did in the previous video when we looked at weight and resolving weight into components, we said that because weight is acting at an angle now relative to the slope, we have to break it down or resolve it into its components. And we, in the previous video, we looked at breaking it up into Fg perpendicular. And then we had another one called Fg parallel like this. Fg parallel. And remember we said that these are 90 degrees to each other. And if this angle over here is 30, then this angle over here is 30 degrees as well. If you don't know how I did that, if this doesn't make sense to you, you want to go watch that previous video where I work with weight. It's linked in the description box below. But what's important to note is that, do you see that when the situation was flat horizontal surface, Fn and Fg were in the same plane. They were both along the y-axis. Now, Fn is over here and Fg is pointing straight down. They are not along the same plane. Okay, they're not along the same plane. However, Fn and Fg perpendicular are along the same plane. You can almost think of it as the y-axis, but it's been tilted, but we refer to it as the perpendicular forces, all the forces that act 90 degrees. So both Fn and Fg perpendicular act at 90 degrees to the surface. So just in the same way as we did it in the previous scenario, we know that this box is not going to move in this direction. It's not going to move in the perpendicular plane. If it's going to move, it's either going to slide down the slope or it's going to be pulled up the slope, but it's not going to move in the perpendicular direction, which means F net in the perpendicular direction is zero. And now which two forces act in the perpendicular direction? The ones that I've highlighted in yellow, Fn plus Fg perpendicular equals zero. And again, I know you're probably gonna say, ma'am, why are you putting plus signs in between? We always start with plus signs. Then we choose a direction that is positive. So I'm choosing this way in the direction of Fn as positive. So when I substitute in a value for Fg perpendicular, I will make that negative. Because if positive is this way, then negative will be this way. Okay. Now, how do I find Fg perpendicular? In the previous weight video, we learned that Fg perpendicular is equal to your mass times acceleration due to gravity times cos of the angle of the slope. If you don't know how I got there, you're going to, go to, you're going to want to watch that video. My mass is 2, g is 9.8. Yes, you can also substitute that in as 19.6. You can do that. And then cos of your angle, cos of 30. I'm going to leave it like that when I substitute it in there. I'm not going to work it out yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, Fn is what I'm looking for. Then I'm going to say minus 2 times 9.8 times cos of 30 equals 0. When I take that over, yes, it's going to become positive, And we get 16,97 Newton. I'm going to leave it as the magnitude. Let's just pretend they wanted you to find the magnitude of Fn. So magnitude means no direction. That's your magnitude. And once again, you could say, ma'am, why are you overcomplicating it? Why can't we just learn and why can't we just do that? If the object is on the slope, if an object is on a slope, then Fn 
is the same as FG perpendicular. Why do we have to go through this whole effort, this entire effort of doing it like this? I get you. You can, in this case, say that Fn and Fg perpendicular are the same, have the same magnitude. However, I'm teaching you how to do it properly for a more complicated situation like the one that is coming up in the next example. Now, this is the example that I'm talking about that is a little bit more complicated. First thing that I want you to do is look at the scenario and I want you to tell me which forces are acting in the y direction or the perpendicular direction. I know you're going to say the normal force and you're going to say weight. Okay. Before I tell you about the additional force that you may have missed, I want us to draw a free body diagram together. So you draw your dots like that. If n is pointing up, if in if g is pointing down if g and then we've got if a that's pointing up and to the right now the reason i am making a big deal out of if a is because if you watch my previous videos you'll remember that i said that if we have a force that is acting at an angle relative to the surface now what do i mean here's the surface okay here's the surface if A is acting at an angle relative to the horizontal or the surface, we have to break that down into its components. We have to resolve that into its components. So we will have a component that goes like this and we'll have a component that goes like this. Let's label them. Well, because this one is going along the X or along the horizontal or along the parallel, you can call this F A X or you can call it F A parallel. Doesn't matter. And the green one over here, because it's going up, down, it's going vertical or perpendicular, you can call it F A Y, because it's along the y-axis, or F A perpendicular. Now, if this box moves to the right, there probably will be some friction acting to the left, so you would add that in if that was the case, but I'm not too bothered about it for this question, because in this question, I want us to focus on finding the normal force, so finding F N. That's our focus for this question. And remember in the previous questions, when we had objects on the flat surface, we considered the forces acting up and down. So it was Fn and it was Fg. When the surface was inclined, we considered the perpendicular forces, which was Fn and Fg perpendicular. In the same way, we need to consider the perpendicular forces, which as we mentioned would be Fn, Fg, and the y component or the perpendicular components of the applied force. So be careful here, it's not the applied force as a whole, it's a component of the applied force. So this can be a little bit more tricky. But how we would find the normal force is as follows. We would do the same method, so we would say, F net in the perpendicular direction must give me zero, because the box isn't moving in that direction. We've got Fn plus Fg plus the applied forces perpendicular component. Remember, just the up part. So it's all those forces pointing up down. Those are the three forces we need to add together. So it's not just two forces like in the previous situation, there's three. And now how you would do this is as follows. Let's pretend that they told me that the box once more is two kilograms. Remember in the previous question we worked out that the weight of that box, remember it's mass times gravity, it's two times 9.8, it's 19.6 newton down. That would be my weight still. So let's do it. So we got our weight. And now let's pretend that they told me that this angle over here is, I don't know, let's say 20 degrees. It doesn't really matter. And let's say that they tell me that the applied force is 10 newton. Let's just make up a random number. Now remember, when I substitute stuff in here, you need to consider direction. So... As we did in the previous examples, I'm just going to choose up as my positive direction. If n is what I'm looking for, so leave it. If g is going down, so remember up is positive. If g is going down, so you're going to say minus 19,6 because remember our weight is 19,6 and it's going down, so it must be negative. And now if a perpendicular, how would I work out if a perpendicular? Remember, I'm looking for this one here the perpendicular component. I know the hypotenuse, it's 10 newton, 
that's the applied force. I know this angle is 30 degrees. Sorry, it's 20. I made it 20. So let's keep it 20. This angle here is 20 degrees. So F A perpendicular would be 10. And now am I looking for opposites or am I looking for adjacent? I'm looking for opposites. I'm looking for opposite my angle because my perpendicular is opposite my angle in this case. So I'm going to use sine 20. So it's always your hypotenuse, which is 10. There it is. It's your applied force. Sine, because we're looking for opposites, and your angle, 20. That is the value of FA perpendicular. That is this value. And it's going up. See how it's pointing upwards? So we're going to say plus 10 sine 20 equals 0. Now when we solve for the normal force, as usual, we have to take everything over. So it becomes positive 19.6 minus 10 sine 20. You can work out 10 sine 20 separately first if you wanted to. And I get 16,18 Newton. Let's just focus on magnitude at the moment, so I'm not asking for a direction. So what I'm trying to show you in this scenario is that when I have an object like this where there's another force acting at an angle, so therefore we can break it up into components, there's no longer just normal force and gravity or force of gravity that acts in the y direction. There's also a component of that applied force that I need to take into consideration when finding the normal force. It's very, very, very important to consider everything. And that's why it makes sense to learn how to do it using this layout. Now remember, why do we care about working out the normal force? We need the normal force in order to work out friction and stuff like that. They ask for it often in Newton's Laws questions. So I hope this video has helped. I will go over how to calculate friction and stuff and the different types of frictions in the next video. And remember, if you've missed any videos on vectors or Newton's Laws, check the playlist linked in the description box below. Bye everybody.